These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Well, I think you watched uh, an explanation of this uh, on the video, so we don't have to spend too much time on these basic ideas, but we'll have to expand them. Yeah, yes, I need some pretty difficult questions here. Okay, so let's say we have this incoming light that's coming into this film. Well, we would expect that some of the light, would, uh, so here's the film here. The film kind of has two surfaces, so we could think of this as air, film, and air. Well, we'd expect that some of the light would reflect when it hits the first surface of the film. And then that would come back along the same exact line it came in on. Uh, I can't draw it on the same line, so I'll draw it a little bit below, but it's the same line. So here's the light that was reflected from surface one. On the other hand, some of the light will pass through the film, and it'll be reflected from surface two of the film. And some of that will get all the way to the screen over here. OK. Now again, in reality, all three of these should be at the same line. All three of these are at the same height. I'm just drawing them at different heights so I can see them all. So these two over here are going to come together to form the same spot. These two are really at the same height. And the question is, are we going to get a bright spot or a dark spot? So we want to know, what does it take to get a bright spot over here? Well, you know that we're going to get a bright spot if there is constructive interference between these. A bright spot if there's constructive interference, which means it's a bright spot if when they arrive, these two rays are in phase with each other. A bright spot if the two rays arrive in phase. Um, well, why wouldn't they arrive in phase? One reason they might not is that one of them is traveling a longer distance than the other. In fact, uh, let's say that the film has a length of D, or maybe uh, your book uses T. T or D, I think I'll use D, but I think maybe your book uses T for the length of the film. So what's the path length difference here between the two rays? How much longer does the bottom ray have to travel than the top ray to get all the way to the screen? It would have to be whatever D is plus. Just think about that a little bit more. The path length difference is how much longer. So which ray traveled further? The ray that hit the first uh, surface of the film or the one that hit the second surface? The one that hit the second surface. Yeah, because it had to go from here to here and then back. So how much further did it go? It didn't actually go D. It, it went. Uh, didn't it go 2D? Right? Because first it had to go from surface 1 to surface 2, and then it had to come back from surface 2 to surface 1. Okay, so the path length difference here is not d but 2d. Um, there are some other examples of interference and, diffra and, and diffraction earlier in the chapter uh, where the path length difference uh, depends on d, but here it depends on 2d. Okay. Unfortunately, though, there's another issue with films. Uh, the other issue with films is sometimes when you reflect from a surface, your phase inverts. Sometimes when you reflect from a surface, your phase inverts. And this happens anytime you're moving to a medium, uh, anytime you're going up against a medium with a higher index of refraction. So when you're reflecting, off a medium with a higher N than the medium that you're coming in on. I don't know how to express that. Uh, with a higher end, when you're reflecting off a medium with a higher end than the medium 
of the incoming ray, the phase of the wave inverts. On the other hand, if you're reflecting off a medium with a lower end, there's no change. No change when you reflect off a medium with a lower end. It, um, we only have this inversion when you reflect off a medium with a higher end. Well, we have to figure out what the ends are here. Do you remember what's the end of the air? Is it one? Yeah, that's right. Remember that end tells you how much the medium is slowing down the light. But the air really doesn't slow down the light at all. So it has the lowest possible end, which is one. So this would be n equals one here too. Now, would the film then have a uh, n that's bigger than one or less than one? It's going to be bigger. Because this is the smallest possible n. That's an important idea um, that we talked about yesterday. Um, n tells you how much the light has been slowed down. Well, it really hasn't been slowed down at all by the air, so that's the lowest possible n. The film is going to slow it down somewhat, so here the n is bigger than one. What the n is depends on what type of film it is. If it was water, it would just be 1.33, as we saw last time. So let's think about what happens when we reflect off the first surface. When we reflect off the first surface, um, are we reflecting off a medium with a bigger n or a smaller n than the incoming light has? Um, when we reflect off this, it's the same, so it's not going to be any. Uh... Let's go through that together. The light is coming in from the air, mm -hmm. and it's reflecting off a surface with an n that's oh, bigger than one. It's going to. It's going to. It's going to invert. Yeah. This is the exact situation when we reflect off this type of surface, when we're reflecting off a medium with a higher n than uh, the medium of the incoming light. Here, we're going from 1 to greater than 1. So this is where this is going to invert. OK. Um, so uh, there's an inversion over here. Now remember that, of course, this originally all the light was in phase with each other because it was one ray. When it was all one ray, all the light was in phase. Uh, we're assuming that this is a coherent ray where all the light is in phase with itself. Um, actually, I shouldn't say this ray inverts. I should say there's an inversion on this ray. I didn't leave myself in that room, but this ray over here has gotten inverted, the one that is uh, reflecting off of surface one. So now it's half a cycle out of phase with the other ray. Since they started in phase, now they each have a cycle out of phase. Now, how about what's happening over here? Um, when we reflect off of this surface, um, are we reflecting off uh, a medium with a bigger n or a smaller n? Uh, can I ask something? Yeah. Like, just for uh, conceptual purposes, why, how do you determine whether it's a half of uh, uh, wavelength or a quarter? Or how, how did you determine that? Would you automatically said that it was going to In this ray, all of the light beams are in phase with each other. Um, and then we said that when you reflect off a medium with a higher n, um, then your phase inverts. Well, if you start being, with, if you start off in, in phase with something, if you start off exactly in phase with something, and then you invert, then you must be exactly half a cycle out of phase. Okay. So. So here we have two waves that are uh, exactly in phase with each other. These are exactly in phase. But now let's say that somehow this wave inverts. Well, if this wave inverts, now it will look like this. This is the inversion of the wave I had on the board a second ago. And since it used to be exactly in phase with this top wave, and now it's inverted, now it's 180 degrees out of phase. OK. okay. Um, so this inversion is going to now make the two waves exactly one half cycle out of phase. This is a full inversion from crest. Everyone who used to be a crest is a trough. Okay, that's an important point. All right. So um, now this ray and this ray are a half a cycle out of phase. Now is there going to be another inversion over here? Are we are, are we moving into a, a medium here with a higher n? Uh, this ray that reflects off of surface 2, is this reflecting off a surface with a higher n or a lower n? Remember, we're reflecting off the air over here. It's, uh, lower. So will there be an inversion? No. So that's the only inversion that will happen in this case. But the reason we have to discuss this is that you were assigned some problems where we weren't just dealing with air. And in that case, there might be an inversion over here as well. So we have to be able to analyze it. That's why if you look at this section of the chapter, there isn't any actually any formula because the formula is always different depending on how many inversions there are. So you have to think it through every time.
can't just plug into a formula here. This is one case where we can't just plug into a formula. 